Nice to see everybody. If you are, have any questions as we go along, make sure you get them in the comments. Um, I'm going to gently growth hack you to, to, to do all sorts of these little things today. Um, but I'm going to fly through a little bit about me to begin with. Um, so if, uh, I live in Paris uh, with my wife and my little daughter. I've been recruiting about 10 years now. Um, so <laughs> plenty of time. Um, I worked cool little companies in London. List.com was the last one before I moved to Indeed, um, where I worked for them across Europe. I've been working at Dr. Lieb this year, um, and I built this thing called the growth hacking recruiters.com, um, which is just work in progress at the moment. So if you're in the Facebook group, there's only 5,000 people in that Facebook group already. Uh, there's some cool stuff coming on there for you. And today we're going to talk about how to growth hack your hiring in 2021. So I want to tell you what growth hacking is. I want to tell you why it works in recruitment, some of the applicable tips and, and tricks that you can use. I want to talk to you about practical examples and I want to specifically um, go from the perspective of a hiring manager to begin with because I feel like you know we can th those people that are looking for, for growth hacks are often those that don't have a massive recruiting team um, and then I'm going to talk about how to do it at scale and that kind of stuff. So what is growth hacking? Well, I hope you've already heard of it. It's been around for a while now. Sean Ellis coined, coined the term um, growth hacking to describe sustainable growth approach used by hyper growth companies like Facebook, Airbnb, Amazon. Um, that's according to growthhackers.com, which is obviously Sean's website. He started this as a talent hack to find difficult niche skill set in product marketing and web marketing, where basically looking for this type of person who are creative marketeers, they use data, they do testing, they understand stuff like behavioral psychology, um, and they can do cool things with coding and automation and tech, um, which is this kind of crazy dichotomy of skills. And those frameworks that those crazy growth hackers are building are really applicable to loads and loads of web-based products, um, world-based products as well. And you know, these things have been around for ages on the internet. I'm talking from the days of Hotmail when there was when they sold, you know, when Hotmail sold, there was only 70 million people um, on the internet using it. But you know, Airbnb have been growth hacking. You might know stuff like Wish. Um, I was thinking about you know Black Friday. Um, but yeah, Wish is this super addictive like e-commerce website where they give you loads of points and this kind of stuff and they're trying to sell you all this Chinese stuff. Well, you know, um, that's crazy growth hacking at, at taken to the next level. Today, we're going to talk about it, how you can do it in recruitment. And, you know, there's some really simple growth hack here. You could just change your office Wi-Fi to we're hiring. Um, here's the website. And, and you just see everyone who's connecting to Wi-Fi around you will see that. Um, and, yeah, you know, growth hacks in terms of recruitment hacks, well, it's about getting attention and, and not just that, but you know, Elon Musk, when he needs to get attention for hiring in Berlin, he tweeted this and got six and a half thousand retweets. Um, and you can do really funky, cool little things. So we're not talking about evil hacking. We're talking about cool, creative ways um, that you can apply clever marketing tactics, technical tools, automation um, to recruiting. And why do these recruit work, these things work so well? Because a recruiter already is like a bit of a growth hacker anyway. They already understand human behavior. They're already doing marketing. So writing job ads, sending emails, all this kind of stuff. Over the last few years in my career, we've seen a huge switch to having access to way more data. Um, and so, you know, whether that's online data about human capital and, and, and the actual talent pools and talent markets and people behavior, um, or whether that's, uh, you know, data about how we hire ourselves. And finally, this clever little dust of the automation, the technology, the coding, the scraping, all that kind of stuff. That's what really kind of makes you into this growth hacking recruiter, where you understand all these things and are able to tie them together to creatively solve these problems that we face. At the end of the day, in 2021, we're all going to be asked to do more with less. Like, I think that what we all know has happened this year is that everyone has tightened their belts. And as recruiters already often underfunded, um, I definitely have been as a, as a single recruiter in startups, um, you know, very little budget and being asked to hire loads of people and growth hacking is just going to be more and more relevant 
for everyone in 2021. We're all going to become these pirate uh, growth hackers. <laughs> so this is a, f um, a reference actually to a framework from the growth hacking recruiters called R. And I wanted to show you a really easy way how a growth hacking framework applies to a recruiting um, situation. So this growth, rate, growth hacking framework um, is about how you sell goods online, specifically SaaS platforms. Um, and it based on the idea that we can talk about a funnel, which is based at the top with awareness, then acquisition, then activation, then retention, then revenue, obviously, because um, that's what this is about. And then referral. That's what, how the, the growth hacking world can apply a framework to analyze and find opportunities within the data of a sales funnel. And then, you know, basically you can apply this to your recruiting, like the awareness piece of it. How many people know you're hiring today? How many people are seeing your job ads, seeing that kind of stuff on the internet? Um, it's really, really uh, interesting to start to think about how you can use this growth hacking tactic of a, 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 R, 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 or R, the pirate tactic, and actually apply it to how you're analyzing your recruiting. How many people know how you're hiring? How many people are looking at your job ads? How many people are applying to those job ads? That activation, this is the activation stage. And then, you know, in interviewing and in recruiting, the process is alone. So you need to look at how many people are retained through that interview process. What do those conversion rates look like at each step of the way? And then revenue, what well, we're going to talk about that as hires. How many people do you actually get to the bottom of the funnel? And, you know, how many people are being referred? Because that's a great way to just grow your team virally. And, you know, you can grow your team through referrals, through network value, um, same way as growth hackers create viral campaigns um, through growing their SaaS platform or their product on the internet. So I wanted to, to start this with people from a hiring manager perspective, because when I asked Chloe who was on the call, she said, well, there'll be some recruiters and there'll be some people that are hiring managers. And if you're a CEO or a hiring manager or and you don't have a recruiting team, then this is some really simple recruiting hacks that you can use. In fact, we should probably rename this little section, how my wife hired four people in six weeks for a company with three employees, no budget, no career page, no cool brand, and no time. She's in a startup at the moment, my wife. She's building a publishing company in Paris. And the first thing that she, when she's like, I've got to hire all these people, the first thing that I talked to her about doing was breaking down the process, starting with preparation, and then a phase of engagement, and then assessment and offer of the people that we go through. And the first thing that I was able to apply from my growth hacking knowledge to really simple things for her to take away from it. How many people do you need to talk to? She's like, I'm never going to have time to talk to all these people. And she's you know, super stressed, super time poor, super resource poor, but needs to hire these people. And, and, and just being able to talk through these kind of preparation questions. How many people do you want to talk to? What does that interview process look like? What can we tell people about it before we start talking about it so we're ready and we're prepared? And then we launched into a two-week engagement phase, job ads, referrals, groups and networks. And then finally, at the end, the assessment of an offer phase, allowing her to hire these people. So this is kind of how we break it down. Really simple, really simple process, right? And we wanted to calculate how many people we need to see. And you might say, okay, I need to see three people. And it's quite funny when you ask someone this question as a professional recruiter, because they don't really know how many people that you might need to um, filter through to get to the right person. Um, so, you know, 20, 50, 100, who knows? Um, there's a really cool tool if you do know about this, and I think that every recruiter on the call should know about this, is the candidate sourcing funnel calculators from Glenn Cathy, where you can actually use your current um, conversion rates to look at what kind of numbers you need to do. It's great to, to help you with uh, managing, hiring managers. It's great to help you with that. But everyone should understand it and have a look at it. Play with that little open source spreadsheet because when you know how much time you're investing in here, you should know exactly um, you know what the scale of the project looks like. So what did the interview process look like? Well, the first thing we had to do some screening. Then she wanted to do the test. This is all part of that preparation. And then she wanted to meet the team. And just as a junior hire manager, you know, she's like, we have to talk about the basic things, but getting those basics right at the beginning saves you loads of time at the end. One of those specific things was, you know, making sure they have a little checklist for each person before we can interview them on exactly how, what they have to, you know, answer what they have to say, what's going to be interesting, and having a killer question. Um, so to make sure that, you know, there was a qualification there as she was talking to these people. She prepared the tests beforehand. 
So he wanted to have some specific tests. He's hiring a graphic designer as one of the people. One person was an editorial person. So we did that preparation beforehand. So we had it. As soon as we spoke to them, that person, we can move them on, send them the test. And then we obviously needed the team involved in well in this hiring process. So with coronavirus, I think it's one of the big challenges that's come. They didn't want to do virtual recruiting, which a lot of people are doing these days. These guys, they wanted to have people that they met on site. So they did some batch interviewing um, to meet the people um, uh, during one specific day um, in the office, uh, one day a week. So they were all there because obviously they're all distributed around. And just these really simple optimization um, points in terms of this as a as a hiring manager helped her to get through this, you know. And I think that the biggest fear that she had after she kind of, okay, everything is ready, is what can we tell people? I don't have a website. I don't have a brand. Not really many people know our products yet. And, you know, I think you can be really honest and simple with this. And in 2021, at any scale, any organization needs to be honest about the challenges that they have for the people that come to work there. So I think it's really, really exciting to look at stuff like uh, this, uh, these blog ads, these blog, I don't know, blog job ads, blog ads. I was thinking it could be a cool name. You can tell me in the questions. But basically, if you look at what these guys are doing uh, on signal versus noise, they've got these really simple um, job ads, which are basically a co company presentation, examples of the company work, bullet points about the job and, you know, super honest, super possible. And what we did with, with, with my wife in this little growth hacking, you know, sprint to get these jobs filled was, you know, just write really simple um, presentation. It was a Google Doc. She had some, some pictures in it, links to people that she was working with, links to the projects. And, you know, she was able to send people that. And, and that's just a really nice experience. And with that, right, this is the framework. You can take this away. This is basically what we use to, to, to send people. Um, with this, like just creating that replicable content made it really, really easy. So, you know, where do we start looking for people? We started with people that we know. You know, if you don't know how to go onto LinkedIn and search your current network, go learn it. I had to do it with my, my wife, but, you know, um, I think that every manager, every CEO, every company owner should know this, right? So look in your network first, ask them for referrals, recognize their experience, right? Be specific, make that content easy to share. It's something like a little email like this. Um, and then share it within your network as well. Like alumni groups, we found were a great source of people. And she also is part of a couple of publishing groups on Facebook and LinkedIn. So it's super, super simple. The beginning of telling people you're hiring through the network. And then obviously you branch out so you can advertise for free. Indeed and LinkedIn and Facebook all allow you to advertise jobs for free if you're an employer. This is the thing that happens though, right? This leads to loads of unqualified candidates. What's going on? I've got too many people clogging up my inbox. Well, what we did with her, and obviously because she's time poor, was just do some really simple things. Set up some filters in your inbox to push job applications into specific emails and folders. We took specific slots in the diary to look at CVs. And then all you have to do is say yes or no at this stage. So a couple of canned responses to reject and advance the candidates fast, make it easy for her. Um, and using schedulers to book interviews, this just made it super simple, like super simple ways to optimize that process. And this is where that heart of growth hacking applies to recruiting is if you, you can optimize everything, there's great tools built by these great people that you can go out there and use. Um, so yeah, I think this is a, a really interesting and fun little project to work with. And the, the fun thing about it was that, you know, all in all, we got about 700 applications. She only spoke to 14 people. She only needs to speak to 14 people. 11 of them completed tests, seven final interviews and the four hires. They came from the places that we could have predicted. Um, and I think, you know, it's really simple. If you're a hire manager, if you're listening to this, if you're a small business owner, just remember, like, be prepared and tell people, grab people's attention, tell them that you're hiring. In 2021, I feel like with what's happening in the world, great people are going to be looking for jobs. And you should just start there if you're going to be thinking about how to growth hack this at scale. What about doing this at scale? What about doing this at like serious scale, right? Like I, I've been working in companies where we've been doing, you know, 100 people a month, uh, 600 people in a year, 1,000 people in a year, 2,000 people in a year. The lesson that I've learned is it's the hiring managers that make the hires. Um, recruiters are just the catalyst for getting the right people to talk to your hiring team. So I think that it's worth remembering that and that you should 
there's like no secret key here, right? You need to have the time, have the tools, have the things to collaborate with people. Like recruiting takes time. It's a people job. It takes people to do that. I think as recruiters, you need to understand intent and you need to just automate as much as you possibly can, right? Like in collaboration, there's your uh, kit and gif, uh, Chloe. In, in, when we talk about collaboration, I wanted to think about some little collaboration hacks as recruiters you can do. Um, start with sharing your recruiting data. I think this is the, the opening up of the conversation. When you sit down with a hiring manager and you tell them, this week, I spoke to X number of people. We had this many people apply. We had this much happening. And they understand the work that's happening. Um, spend time with your hiring manager, sourcing with them. Sit next to them. Look at CVs with them. It's going to save you time in the future. Get feedback on the job ads and the messages that you're using. And make things that your team are proud to share. Like, there's no doubt about it. The more stuff that you create as a recruiting team for people to see out there, the more awareness you build about the fact that you're hiring and who you're hiring, what you're hiring for, then it's going to make your life easier in 2021. A couple more things that you should definitely look at. They applied them really well at Dr. Lee. Check-ins, retrospectives, end of month reports, end of quarter reports, analyzing and looking at that data with the hiring managers, what's going to um, really push you forward in 2021. Use that data to identify opportunities. Use the data to see places that you can go and grow and experiment with. And you should be able to really break down your data. I think the recruiters today have access to so much more data than they had before with ATSs. You should start to really kind of get your grips, get your hands with that, get down dirty, break it down, department, location, role, understand where people come from, understand the conversion rates by stage, understand the successful source of hire. This presentation isn't long enough for me to dive into exactly how to do that. Um, but you know, I think at the end of the day, your goal here is to get people to say, yes, I want the job. Um, and I think a lot of recruiters are frustrated that a lot of people are saying, no, I've never heard of you. I'm not that interested. You've got to understand intent, right? Like intent is the key thing to getting this right. And it's something that is such a human thing that it changes all the time. It's a wiggly line. I'm sure you've seen this before if you watch some of my content around. But, the, you know, the high intent people this year in 2021, it's going to be applications. There's going to be more of them. You're going to get great referrals. Look after them. There's going to be so many people in your ATS there's going to be so many people on the CV databases that I think that social media may fall behind a little bit as we focus on getting this, this application referral ATS bit right um, in 2021. And if you want to get it right, this is how you do it. You start by educating and then you inform people and then you engage them at the top end of that funnel and bring them through that journey um, of making that decision that they want to work in your company. If you want to get faster at everything. You've got to take this optimize everything mindset as a recruiter as well. Um, I think if you're running a big team and you have teams that are not coming to you, suggesting what they want next, what's taking them too long, ask them what tools they can get. I think there's so many cool things that can really help you optimize those workflows for recruiters for loads and loads of people. So, you know, Calendly, Text Expander, Linked Helpier, Zapier, template everything, but don't act like a robot. Don't act like a robot because I think that the humanity and the, that voice is what you're going to need. So there you are. Like that's kind of everything that I have in terms of how I think you can growth hack your hiring in 2021. Collaborate with your hiring managers. Tell the story. I think people are interested in hearing it. Use the data that you have. Make sure that you can do things like get that pirate framework and look at how many people you have at each step of it. Um, and then be creative in the message that you have. If you want to know more about this, um, head over to facebook.com slash growth hacking recruiters. That was 20 minutes. I felt like I was speaking super fast.